the overall capability and what we were looking for was as high level autonomy as possible and as much collaboration. So what we really want to do is take the man out of the loop as much as possible. What's done today typically is one operator or even multiple operators for a single vehicle. Um, what we've shown here is two operators with up to 14 vehicles. In July 2009, in answer to a growing military and humanitarian need to accelerate the evolution of unmanned ground vehicle or UGV capabilities, the U.S. Army Research Development and Engineering Command, in partnership with the Australian Defense Science and Technology Organization, launched an unprecedented worldwide search for prototype UGV solutions with the ability to autonomously and dynamically coordinate plan and carry out intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance tasks against changing priorities. What we're doing here is shaking the bushes for the best technical capabilities. From an initial field of 23 competitors from across the globe, five finalist teams met in Adelaide, Australia in November 2010 to participate in the first ever multi-autonomous ground robotic international challenge or MAGIC. I'm amazed and excited at the same time because it was really cool to see the different approaches that all the different universities and companies from around the world took to address the magic challenge. It was really, really encouraging to see when you throw the challenge like that and the innovative minds can come up with something and they can demonstrate something in this, such a complex environment. It was, it was great to see that sort of technology develop in such a short period. This grueling three-phase course required each team to demonstrate the use of multi-vehicle robotic teams that could work together safely, efficiently, and effectively to explore and map a defined challenge area, to correctly detect, locate, classify, track, and neutralize objects of interest, to combine information from all UGVs and compare that data with actual on-the-ground information to evaluate performance to employ a maximum of two operators to supervise at least three UGVs, and to complete a series of increasingly complex exercises within a three and a half hour time frame. So it was real exciting. In my, in my opinion, it was a watershed moment in many ways for mobile ground robotics. The competition was intense, with the first, second, and third place finishers set to receive 750,000, 250,000, and $100,000 respectively. The real prize, though, was the opportunity to collaborate in fielding the next generation of fully autonomous ground vehicle systems capable of effectively supporting military and civilian emergency operations. In my mind, innovation is about collaboration. It's about bringing people with different thoughts and ideas and disciplines at every level, right? So at the, at the fundamental researcher level, to the engineering level, to the technical staffs from, from Australia and the United States who, who made this competition. The competition was successfully completed on November 12th. You know, I think that this is an important competition because it really showed the collaborative environment with, it, with robots. And I think it's a first of its kind in that way. And I think people are going to look back on magic and consider it a su success in pushing the technology to the next level. Five days later, at the 2010 Land Warfare Conference in Brisbane, Australia, the winners were announced. I present the uh, award to Michigan. All right, thank you. Uh, this is really exciting and a great honor. In the end, however, all the teams were winners. From my perspective, it's been fantastic. I've seen magnificent technologies. I've seen magnificent skill sets demonstrated by the groups. I've seen varying levels of autonomy and different levels of autonomy. And I sort of just wish I could wrap you all up and put you into one thing. Ultimately, the winners are all of those men and women who will come to depend on these breakthrough technologies to save lives and defend the values that we all hold dear. I think we were really strongly motivated by this competition uh, with the potential of saving lives of the men and women who in turn protect us. Uh, but more than that, uh, in addition to that, being able to help protect civilians who find themselves in harm's way. And I saw that as seeds for future research, which hopefully will provide fruit further down the road and benefits to uh, both Australia and the United States. I think we'll see a lot of the technology fielded. Uh, that'll be neat to see to be a part of and say, well, I was, I was part of that.